Welcome to UCTV News. I'm Grace Gagnon. And I'm Luke Hydash. We begin with some big news for the men's basketball team. Dan Hurley, the former men's basketball coach at the University of Rhode Island, has been named UConn's new head coach. UConn Athletic Director David Benedict says his proven track record of developing student athletes and preparing them for productive lives both in and outside of basketball perfectly aligns with UConn's values. Hurley will be the team's 19th coach and has agreed to a six-year deal with UConn. He will receive $2.75 million in his first season. After exploring the possibility of adding wheelchair basketball to the list of UConn sports offered, the university has decided it's a no-go, the Hartford Current reports. After being approached by a high school wheelchair basketball <laughs> player out of Pennsylvania earlier in the year, UConn looked into partnering with Ryan Martin, a Simsbury resident who has led efforts to mainstream the sport. Even though wheelchair basketball won't be launched as an official sport, the university says it's more than willing to make it a club sport so that students will still get to participate. UConn student designers and vendors from all over the state displayed and sold products at a pop-up shop sponsored by UConn's Project Fashion on late Saturday night. Businesses and students showcased clothes, shoes, and jewelry. Clothing themes were racially and environmentally aware. Kinfolk Clothing recognized the achievements of civil rights leaders and activists while another designing made her clothing from other recycled clothes. Student designers and vendors showed their creativity in the student union selling everything from customized sneakers to homemade hiking fanny packs. Well, the Lady Huskies have done it again. The UConn women's basketball team beat South Carolina 94-65 Monday night and will go to the Final Four USA Today reports. This win comes after the Lady Huskies lost last season in the Final Four in a buzzer beater against Mississippi State. South Carolina then played Mississippi to win the NCAA championship last year. The Lady Huskies' next opponent will be the winner of the Notre Dame versus Oregon game. Such an exciting time of year for the women's basketball team. I love it. Always wishing them well, always hoping they do well. Absolutely. And now we move to catch up with the rest of Connecticut. Thousands of people took to the streets at the Connecticut State Capitol on Saturday the Hart for the Hartford chapter of March for Our Lives. Students, teachers, and parents marched to demand an end to gun violence. The march was organized by Tyler Suarez, whose aunt Dawn Hoxsprung, the former principal of Sandy Hook Elementary School, was killed in the shooting in Newtown in 2012. Suarez says he hopes for state gun legislation that will prevent tragedies like the Newtown shooting from happening again. Former Vice President of the United States Joe Biden brought a full house to New Haven Friday night. People poured into the John Lyman Center for the Performing Arts to hear Biden. He spoke on his service in the Obama administration, his time in the Senate, and the death of his son, Beau. Biden says he is actively pushing to find a cure for cancer and also mentioned the possibility of him running for president. Watch out for your heads. Police are warning people in Connecticut to take caution of hawks as they have been reported to be clawing people's heads in Fairfield. Several people have been attacked in the last few weeks by the birds as they have dive-bombed onto people's heads. Police are involving animal control and are warning residents to be aware. You know, I have two small dogs and I'm always so cautious letting them outside because of hawks, but I've never been concerned for my own safety. Never thought it would be you, that's right. Coming up next, talking about events across the rest of the country. Facebook is under investigation. The Federal Trade Commission wants to know how Facebook users' data ended up in the hands of Donald Trump's 2016 campaign consultants. The scandal started with the Cambridge Analytical scandal. Cambridge Analytica was hired for Trump's campaign and gathered data from 50 million Facebook users without their consent. Facebook stock fell as much as 5% in early trading Monday, and hashtag delete Facebook is now trending. Civil rights activist Linda Brown died Sunday at the age of 75. Brown was the center of the historic 1954 Supreme Court case Brown v. Board of Education that declared school segregation unconstitutional. Her sister, Cheryl Brown Henderson, founding president of the Brown Foundation, confirmed her death to the Capitol Journal on Monday. Two Kansas water park executives have been charged in the death of a 10-year-old boy. 
Caleb Schwab was decapitated while riding Verak, the world's tallest water slide according to the Guinness World Records. At the Schlitterbahn Water Park in Kansas City, the water park owners will be charged with 20 felony charges, including one count of involuntary manslaughter. The Schwabs will receive a $20 million settlement for the accident. After hearing this, I kind of don't want to go on a water slide ever again. <laughs> Absolutely, and we do wish the best to the family there. Next up, we talk politics across the United States. Democrats are condemning a new change made to the 2020 census. The change? There will now be a question included about citizenship status. State officials say the question would deter immigrants' participation and cause a population undercount. One California attorney says she'll sue the Trump administration over the decision because the Constitution requires the United States to count every person living in the country, not every citizen. Connecticut Governor Daniel P. Malloy's nomination for state Supreme Court Chief Justice failed the Senate vote on Tuesday. On Monday, however, Malloy suggested Senate Republicans would seek to block the nomination of Andrew McDonald as the next Chief Justice, implying that the opposition is because he's gay. Senate Republican leader Len Fasano called it a, quote, false narrative, with his party denying allegations of homophobia raised by Governor Malloy. Republicans describe McDonald as a liberal activist judge who places personal opinions into his judicial rulings. And that'll do it for us tonight here at UCTV News. Be sure to check out our YouTube at UCTV Channel 14 and tune in again next Tuesday for another edition of UCTV News. Good night.